Ronald Reagan's racism is nothing new to many people, a lot many people. But uh, a newly released phone call recording from October of 1971, even so, is still jarring to many. We're gonna listen to that recording and then we're gonna bring in our very special guest, uh, David Dennis Jr. He is senior culture editor at News One. So let's take a listen to the audio first. And last night, I tell you, to watch that thing on television, as I, as I did. Yeah. To see those, those monkeys from those African countries. <laughs> Damn them, they're still uncomfortable wearing shoes. <laughs> All right, let's bring in David Dennis Jr., senior culture editor of News One. David, good morning. Thanks for being here with us. Uh, good morning. All right, so uh, it's hard to tell in that audio, but that is former President Ronald Reagan. He wasn't president at the time, it was before he was president. Mm -hmm. He was governor of California yep. at the time. He was on the phone with a very joyful, the current president at the time, Richard Nixon. And you could hear Reagan say, he called African people monkeys and said <clears> they <throat> looked uncomfortable wearing shoes. Um, it, he was upset because it, Tanzania, I'm, I'm sure, I think, sided with China on the UN vote to recognize the People's Republic of China. What were your thoughts when you heard this? Um, well, I, you know, I'm not surprised. Like you said, uh, Ronald Reagan um, has a long history of racism. Uh, black folks across this country. Uh, are not surprised by this. It is sort of vindicating uh, that you know over the last 20 or so years, Ronald Reagan has become this celebrated uh, president, uh, this beacon of civility, uh, especially when you talk about uh, the Republican Party, they talk about going back to the days of Reagan. But for African Americans in this country, that is not really a great thing. I mean, you think about Reagan, you think about um, somebody who did not care uh, to, to say, uh, take it lightly about um, drugs into black communities who do not, um, you know, who saw the AIDS epidemic as something that was for the LGBT community and for, uh, you know, African folks who did not, he didn't seem to care about it. So uh, this, you know, but for years, black people have been saying like, this is the Ronald Reagan that we all knew. And so this recording has taken some people by surprise, but for, uh, you know, black folks in this country, it's not surprising at all. Uh, uh, David, so as, as to add to that list, also the welfare of Queens line, which actually Alexandria Ocasio Cortez mentioned earlier this year, uh, how Reagan used that to divide uh, black folks from other working class people at the time to make sure that the hate was strong, and she caught a bit of hell for it. So first off, just to add with that, I want to add that aspect of some of the things that he did. Uh, what have you seen? You said some people were surprised. What have you seen from many supporters? Or uh, potential supporters for Reagan and the Republican Party, as he's their, you know, their deity. Has there been much response? Because I've been kind of looking. I've been looking as hard because we had the debate stuff yesterday. Has there been a response? Is there any defense to this, or just plain ignoring it? Uh, no, I haven't seen much uh, defense. I've, I think that there has been a uh, everybody is enjoying uh, the circus that was the Democratic uh, debates last night, and so they're kind of shifting their focus there. I would imagine that the uh, Republican Party is relieved that uh, Ronald Reagan didn't have a Twitter account uh, back then, because this would probably have uh, have have been out on the internet. Uh, you know, uh, if if he's anything like our, our current president. Let's go there. Our current president. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what? What's interesting to me, though, before we even go there, I, because as we're talking, this is nothing new. But you still have a lot of people who consider themselves, you know, great people, and they're, you know, conservative people, and they are the party of Reagan. They are Reagan conservatives, and you see people saying this every day. The president had to be fact checked because he reposted this weird meme that someone made of a fake quote of Reagan. But essentially, he was happy. At this quote that implied that you know Reagan was proud of him and called him a future president, and he was bragging about that. And we've we've seen this as kind of this space of people again calling themselves Reagan conservatives when there is so much, so much evidence of Reagan's racism. Why do you think that is? And will this do anything? Will this change that? Because this is. Uh no, I don't think this will change anything. I mean, uh, you know, Reagan's uh, racism has always been there if you dig deep enough into it. So, uh, you know, but if you're thinking about the Republican Party, I mean, uh, you know, how many of their heroes uh, don't have uh, any sort of racist history? Or if you think about politics in general, really in America, right. I mean, you um, look at uh, people who have to who reckon with their past 
and they're present um, of racism and, uh, you know, the way uh, black folks are treated. So uh, this is nothing new. And, you know, last time we talked about the um, the party line between uh, direct line of, uh, you know, from the Republicans to Trump and Reagan is part of that line. I mean, the welfare queen all the way to, um, you know, George uh, Bush uh, inciting race by putting ads out uh, for, you know, the black predators. Uh, when he was trying to get elected, I mean, if you go even to the Democratic Party and the, and the discussion of, of uh, super predators and you go to Trump, I mean, the things that are happening now are not much different. I mean, what's that different between uh, talking about uh, people in Africa and talking about, uh, you know, s whole countries like Donald Trump did? I mean, this is the same exact rhetoric uh, just 30 years later. So uh, we mentioned earlier about how this isn't um it is not sticky because of the the news of the day or the debate of the day. Mm -hmm. What's the approach that a lot of that you think a lot of uh, news, uh, I guess, entities and outlets will make? Will they try to keep this up, or is this one of those things where you're like, oh, well, it didn't really stick. It's not really happening. Um, it's old news, even though 1971 is when it happened. It was old news yesterday, but it was actually new news. Um, is there an approach people that that news entities can take? Because this is one of those things, I remember when, when Trump was uh, was tweeting his racist things, and then I, I think CNN even said, um, this is gonna be a bad, oh no, I'm sorry, it was uh, it was the Epstein situation uh -huh. with, his, uh, with his labor secretary. He goes, this is gonna be bad if this stays in the news. If it doesn't stay in the news, Trump is gonna move on from it. Um, how does this stay in the news? Is it possible? Well, it stays in the news by, by the news organizations themselves keeping it in the news. I mean, the problem is for so long we've let Donald Trump dictate what is news and what is not news. He sends out a tweet and we shift and we run behind him when that's not necessarily the, the role of the media. The media is really there to tell the actual story of what's going on. And what is the story here is that we have a president, a former president who has been lauded, who has been celebrated as the example of what uh, being a presidential human being should look like. And he is a stone cold racist. Now, a lot of the media needs to look within themselves and figure out why they have not been able to address Ronald Reagan's racism for all this time, nor have they been able to call out uh, any any politicians, anybody running for office who uh, evokes Reagan as some sort of beacon of uh, the way politics are supposed to be run. This is on the media to address this, to call this what it is, and it, it is point blank, straight up racism. And speaking of calling it what it is, we just had this conversation when uh, President Trump initially started attacking Congressman Elijah Cummings and it in a horribly racist attack that people still had trouble and we talked about that we broke down the why it's important to call it what it is and be honest and truthful as journalists you know what are your thoughts seeing that the attacks haven't stopped well, it seems pretty clear that that uh, Donald Trump sees this as a way to uh, rally his base. I mean, uh, if you think about presidents when they go into reelection, they talk about you know what can they, what are their wins, what have they succeeded at as presidents. Donald Trump has failed miserably in just about everything he's tried to do as a president. The economy, we're heading to a recession, uh, we're heading to innumerable wars, uh, the climate change is, is bad, <laughs> you know, um, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, people are losing their jobs, factories are closing. But what Donald Trump has succeeded in doing is he has made white power and white supremacy the most important thing going on in Washington. He has fed his base. That is a win for him. And so he is leaning into that heading into reelection. He is going to get his base to rally behind them because he they know that he has their back because what he is uh, purporting, what he is championing is white supremacy. And he is going to get a white supremacy vote. And he knows that. That has been the base that has never left his back. They've never left his side. And they are going to stick with him. So he's leaning into it. So he is going to call out Don Lemon, Elijah Cummings. He's going to call out AOC. He's going to call out every African American he can because he knows that that has been a winning formula for him. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.